How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the updates from 5.1. We're not going to take a look at all of them today. We're going to do a series of videos about 5.1 because there are so many things that we need to take a look at and I don't want this to be a two hour video. The first test that I want to do is um, related to the short video that I did a couple of weeks ago where you saw me doing the Iron Man with a metahuman and I mean the Iron Man UI that he has in front of him, it should be here on screen right now. Uh, the video it has a link in the description too if you want to see that. So what I did is I made that in After Effects and I rendered MetaHuman here in Unreal. Then I did the UI in After Effects. But with this new media player thing in 5.1, I figured that I can actually do that in here. And I know there's a lot of filmmakers that follow me that probably cringe at this because that's something that you usually do in post but it's just me doing the short film so the more things that i can do in camera and save time i'm editing the better for me i'm guessing this will also work for video games now once i loaded my metahuman i found that i have some compiling errors that i i didn't know what to do because it says go and get skin something uh unfortunately matt workman also saw this when he was doing his 5.1 actually this is the issue that i got as well and he has a fix for it here uh thanks matt for posting that otherwise this probably wouldn't work i don't know why the metahumans are having this problem because it's a compiling issue they probably need to update the metahuman plugin for this to work but anyways i want to show you the couple of things so if you click on the errors it's going to take you specifically to where the errors are located so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to leave these two things so if you want to screenshot this here's your chance okay there you go now just a brief explanation of what i did is i changed the skeletal um mesh uh, variable that was here and it was substituted for this one as matt has it here in his example but I also had to add this cast to skeletal mesh because otherwise it wasn't allowing me to get this input into this target right here. So you may have to do this one. The other one was in the construction um, script where it also was given an error. I have to uh, change it. I changed it to get skeletal mesh asset. I'm going to see what happens. Get skeletal mesh and get skinned should be the same should have the same function but we'll see if it uh, costs any trouble but this is one way where you can fix this thing if this gives me trouble in the construction script i'll probably switch both to skin as opposed to get skeletal mesh acid but for now it seems to be working okay with that out of the way um the first thing i'm, I'm going to show you how to do is construct the scene that i had before so for that we're going to go to new level we're going to get an empty create we're gonna drop our metahuman right here. Right now, everything is unlit. Make sure your metahuman is on the highest settings. I'm just gonna see my metahuman from this position. And for this, all you're going to need is a wider lens. You can get that nice compressed look from like the metahuman, from like the Iron Man suit, from when he, uh, Robert Downey Jr. was inside of the Iron Man suit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a cinema camera here. I'm going to go into my camera and I'm going to change this to, let's say, 120. And crop settings, I'm guessing this is for the new anamorphic lens and whatnot. Let's do the focus. I'm going to do 500. And we're going to need a light. So I'm just going to add a light. Just for now, uh, I'm going to add a point light. All right, so this is going to be a temporary light. This is not going to be our final light. I just want to see my metahuman so I can put him in camera. I'm going to go here, scene camera actor. Okay. And now you can see him. Let me reduce the speed of my camera. Probably lower. There you go. Or maybe like this. Okay, this actually looks fine. And what we want to do is we want to get the most out of his face from like here to here. In this case, 
Um, I want to see the least of the neck because this isn't a full suit like the Iron Man suit that he's going to be wearing in the short film. And after that, I just need to rack focus to his face. So let's go back to our camera like this. And there you go. It doesn't, doesn't look like it's in focus very much. I'm just going to bring this back. Now I'm actually in focus. So I guess I'll probably have to get a little bit closer to him. Uh, yeah, so instead of getting closer to him, what we can do is we can increase the size of the lens to like 200. This is probably a lot. It's a super wide lens, but it allows to be a little bit further away. And let me see. There you go. Okay. Uh, maybe not so far. Let's do 150. I think 150 should suffice. I'm sorry for the constant change of lens. It's just things are a little bit different here. All right. I think we're good now. Let me focus. Okay. Excellent. All right. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So now that we have our metahuman in focus, I'm just going to do a couple of things that I saw in the so many cinema videos that I had to watch to get this correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some lights. We're going to add a rectangle light from over here. It's going to be like on top of his face, not fully on top, just a little bit like this. Let's bring it over here, rotate it like that. We're going to make it a little bit wider. I always like to do 120 by 100. And I think intensity, it's probably too much. And this light's probably not centered. So I'm going to uncheck this value so I can move it freely. And that's a little bit better. I think it's too much. And uh, one of the things that I'm forgetting is a post processing volume. Always have a post processing volume in your scene. Uh, the bloom, as you know, I always use convolution. Intensity doesn't matter too much. What we're going to do also is exposure. Exposure is going to be manual because we're going to use a cine camera. And we need some exposure compensation. Now we're going to go here, we're going to make this unbound. Everything's going to go super dark and we're going to do on the compensation. Let's get all the way to nine. All right. This is where we're going to be adjusting the intensity of our first light. So I'm going to go back to my camera. And again, I got this nice little reflection on his eyes. Now for this light, Let's bring this down to like a three or a two. I think this is okay. Now we're going to need a couple more lights over here. Just bring this back and we're going to add two more rectangle lights. It's going to be here. Go back to lights. Red lights. By the way, uh, this has chapters. So if you want to skip to the part where I'm actually doing the UI thing, you can do so. Just follow the chapters in the description down below. But for now, I just want to show how I did this part because a lot of people seem to like that short. I'm just going to leave it at that. And as usual, let's increase the size to 120 by 100. Like this, so it's kind of like a softer light. And do the same thing on the other side. It's going to do 180. All right. And our character is fully lit. There are absolutely no shadows, which is not the best. You want to have some shadows on your cinematic characters over. So I've heard. Uh, so we're not going to. Let me see what we're going to do is instead of. Getting these two lights super lit like they are right now. And if we go back to our camera, yeah, it's it's too blown out. So uh, always change your lights to movable. For some reason, Unreal Engine insists on still having lights as stationary. I don't know why. But anyways, uh, 
uh, like to change these lights to a little bit of color over here. And depending on what colors of UI you're going to have, you probably want to change that to, let's say, some one side like this. But in my case, I'm just going to do both sides of the same color. So you can always do this. You can see the blue that I have and just copy the hex value. Control C, click OK, go back to light three. And we copy the hex value over here. We got exactly the same color. So we got some nice color on both sides. And I think I'm going to lower this to one. And I'm going to lower this to four and four. Okay, so far so good. I don't know if it's me. I don't know if this is like a placebo effect or playing with a new engine and whatnot, but I do think the rendering of the metahumans and everything, it's, it's starting to look a lot better. So yeah, let's just do, actually leave it at three for both and we can reduce the exposure over here, bring it to eight, 8.6, seven. Yeah, I think this is fine. All right, so we have, um, we could do another thing that I did in After Effects was actually give him a glow. We can actually do that over here. We have the side glow. And let's see if we should have a front glow too. So let's put this light over here. I'm going to reduce the attenuation radius just a bit. All right. I think, uh, yeah, let's just leave it at that. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this behind the camera. We're going to increase the radius. Where is my attenuation radius for this? Okay, and we're going to block the light. Okay, so let's bring in the cube. Where is the cube? There it is. And we're going to close the light. Let me just pull this light back up over here so I can see it. There it is. This is pretty much blocking the light. And there you go. So this is what I wanted to do. You can see the light shining on him. Let's go to our camera and see how that looks. Let's toggle it to see. Yeah, it is affecting the world way too much, even though it's very, very small. Let's bring these back a little bit. Okay. Another thing that I'm going to do because light is bouncing is I'm going to duplicate this. Uh, whatever, I don't care about the name right now. And we're going to make it dark. Let me save that. Okay, so as you can see, there is a clear kind of like visor shape thing on his head, which I find that's really cool. I did it a little bit softer when I was in After Effects. So we may have to fix that. Right now it's at 50. Let's do maybe 10. Can't even see that. Let's increase the attenuation radius a little bit more. Let's see, no. So it needs to be something like this. And maybe I need to increase the softness of it. There you go. 
So I just increase the height of it. And it got really soft because if I reduce this, you can see, you can see it really sharp, which if that's what you're going for, that's fine, but that's not what I'm going for right now. So I'm just going to increase it. Let's do it at uh, 10. There you go. Something like that. Because again, I did that when I was um, doing it actually in After Effects. So I think this is good. And we may go here into these lights and actually reduce the amount of light that we have because in the end what we want to have it's kind of like this silhouette over here we don't want to have the neck because the neck is outside the helmet and it's going to make absolutely no sense so we may have to reduce these lights to 0.5 i may just have to mask it in after effects afterwards but just so you guys can get the picture we're just going to reduce this to 0.5 like this so we can still have some light because I don't want to turn it off. And this may be a little bit too much. So let's do 0.5. I think 0.5 is fine. And for this one, let's do maybe, Let's open, now that we have this, let's open this visor a bit. Let's just open this just a little, like that, and maybe this part just a little, this way. Go back to our camera. Okay. But just so you get the gist of what we're doing here, I think he is looking pretty nice. Another thing that before we actually move on to the UI, just to continue on the metahuman rendering part. Again, I think he's looking a lot better than before, but one recommendation that I got from the Yobutsu channel, uh, I'm going to link uh, in the description to his channel down below if you want to visit him. Amazing channel about metahuman and all sorts of rendering stuff. He talked about certain things that you should have when rendering for a metahuman. So before, I got this character like this. He had a more younger looking skin, even though the character in the short film is going to be like around his mid thirties. So there's always some wrinkles at that age. I'm in my mid thirties as well. So yeah, wrinkles are a thing. And this gives a lot of uh, detail because these are digital faces. So if it's too smooth because of the uncanny valley and all that, if faces are too smooth, it's not gonna be realistic. So whenever you're in MetaHuman Creator, just go for a little bit more age looking so you can get more details like I have here on the forehead. You can see under his eyes, all these details. And some of these details you get even in a younger person. It's just because of the way that this is constructed. If you go for the younger textures, it tends to look too smooth. And if it's too smooth, it's not going to look realistic enough. It, it actually looks a little bit stylized. So the other thing that I'm going to do is increase this, maybe two, maybe that's too much. It's just so I get rid of those little shadows over there. Like that. All right, now that we are in our camera, there's another thing. And again, this is from uh, Yabutsu is the face there's one change that he does to the face that i think it's really good looking whether you're doing a darker uh, skin face or a i'm sorry a darker skin in general or if you're doing a lighter skin like i'm doing right now um, one of his recommendations was to change the texture which we're going to go into we're going to go into the texture I'm gonna click away so you can see the changes in real time. Let me actually do it this way. So don't pay attention here, just look at his face. So the first thing is you can see this from test group, texture group. I'm going to change to no mid maps. I usually do this for the final shot, so there are no mid maps when the face texture is loading because that's going to give you the highest quality possible. Now the only other thing that he does is vibrance and saturation so in vibrance 
I already have a uh, certain specific numbers for this character. I'm going to go with 0 0.6. And you see that his skin doesn't change too much, but it does change when I go with the saturation. I'm going to desaturate his face by 0 0.9. And this gives me a little bit of a more, I think, a better look in terms of his skin reacting to the light. So it doesn't look as saturated. Now, some of you may say, well, you could do that in the MetaHuman Creator. Yes, you can. The thing is, I like doing it here within the engine with the lighting that I have, because that way I can control the colors to the kind of lighting that I have. Whereas if you do it in Unreal, uh, in the MetaHuman Creator, you don't have the lighting that you want to have in your scene. So it it's just going to give you much different results. So. I'm just going to leave it at that and uh, we have to do it for all the three of them. So I'm just going to time lapse this part. All right, now that we have everything rendered, uh, or at least light how I want it to render, we're gonna add the UI elements, and this is where we're gonna test the 5.1 feature. So from what I read, what you need to do is you need to add an EXR. Now for this, the UI, you need some footage. I actually had got the UI footage from Render Crate, so I'm gonna give a shout out to them because they actually hooked me up with an account where I can access all these cool stuff. I highly recommend they have a lot of assets that not only you can use in After Effects or DaVinci Resolve, but some of them you can even use in Unreal Engine. They have a lot of free stuff as well as pay stuff, and the pay stuff is actually pretty affordable. So I highly recommend that you visit them. Maybe get a subscription if you see that there are things that you can use, like what I'm gonna show you right now. So I go into Future HUD, and you're going to see that we have all these HUD elements that we can use with our UI. So for that, uh, the one that I'm going to use is this one with circles. And again, this one is not a free one. There are a couple of free ones that you can pick and choose so you can try this out. Once you've logged in and you have registered and all that, uh, you're going to see that you have a download, a way to download it. I actually downloaded it in uh, MP4 and then converted it to EXR with alpha. Right now here, you're seeing it has, it does have an alpha. The reason why I converted it uh, to an EXR is because from the documentation, that's what it says you need. It tells you that you need an EXR. So that's what we're gonna use here. So I'm gonna do right click. We're gonna go to media. We're going to go into image media source. We're gonna call it UI test. And over here, I have my EXRs already processed. And again, it has to be XR. I don't know if there's any other format, but that's what the documentation said. So we pick this. You just need to pick one. It'll pick your whole sequence. You don't need to select everything. You just click open. You're going to see that there's a triangle here with an exclamation sign. This means that your images are not in a path that is correctly for this to be exported as a project. So let's say you're making this as a project or as a game. You need to get them into this path that it says right here in order for you to package it because right now it's in an external uh, address which Unreal is not going to package. But for the purpose of this tutorial and for what I do, which is mostly cinematics, I don't need to mess with this. Now we do need to give it some frame rate. So this footage comes at 30 frames per second. I'm going to save that and I'm going to throw it in here. Let's just throw it right in front of him. Zero this out. Okay, this is where our footage is. Now let's give it a shot to see if it works first. And it does work. It came in with transparency, pretty cool. And the other thing that's actually pretty cool is, as you can see, the um, plane was squared, but as soon as I press play, it actually loads the footage 
how it should be. So I'm going to press stop. And as you can see, the plane goes back to where it was. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do this 90 degrees and uh, we're going to throw it into sequencer. One of the things and one of the reasons why I've never done this before in Unreal is because any footage that I got in here and I turn it into sequencer for some reason, I don't know if I was doing things incorrectly, but every time that I wanted to play some footage and I use sequencer at the same time, the footage will go and play at a different time than the frames that I had on sequencer. So right now, this isn't an issue. So if you go and you create a sequence, we all know how to do that by now. If not, then please go watch my playlist. So all you have to do is drag and drop your um, new footage over here. It's going to ask you, would you like to disable autoplay? Of course you want to do that. You click yes. And we have our footage here. Now it looks stretched out because it's not going to its default uh, transformation as soon as it gets there. But what I wanted to show you is that this now plays with sequencer, which is something that I couldn't get to happen before for some reason. Uh, which is pretty cool. This is some good things that we're getting in 5.1. Now, what I'm going to do is click here and we are going to rescale it. I'm actually going to unlock it and I'm going to rescale it this way to where it looks like this. I think this looks fine. And now when we play it, it actually looks pretty cool. Okay. This is still pretty big for UI elements. So we probably need to reduce the size. Uh, I don't know if this size is still too big. Let's drop it in front of him. Let's go back to our camera and let's put it in front of him. That's yeah, probably still too big. So let's do 0 0.1. Okay. This is good. And again, this is why doing it this way is better than pre-composing because now I can do this. I don't have to do it in After Effects with all the layers and whatnot, which again, if you're an editor that's been doing this for so many years, probably easier to you to do it in uh, After Effects or DaVinci. But for me, this is just much easier. Well, as you can see, this works perfectly uh, as our MetaHuman right here. And what we can do is we can actually throw in our camera into the sequence. And we can throw in our MetaHuman as well. So I'm going to Wrap this metahuman, throw it in here. And it's going to load the control rig. I'm actually going to keep control rig on. I'm not, I'm not going to keep uh, the face control rig, but I am going to keep the control rig so I can move him around a little bit during this. Now, the other thing that usually happens with this UI elements, uh, kind of like what Iron Man used to do, is it moves with the face. So the face doesn't move a lot because you're supposed to be inside the helmet, but the face moves a little bit and actually the face does move a little bit. Now we're going to test another thing about Unreal Engine 5.1. I'm going to briefly do it here. I'm going to expand a lot in the coming video because I'm going to do it for my short film in one of the scenes. So you saw then on the YouTube short that I released, whenever he moves, the UI moves, which is something that we want to do in here. So in order to do that, it's actually pretty easy now because we have constraints and I'm not going to get a lot into what constraints are, but it is what they sound like. So constraint constrains the object to another object. And when the other object moves, this one follows. Now we have difference uh, over here. If I click plus, you can see that we have rotation scale, parent, look at translation. I'm going to get a little bit deeper in the coming video because this is very dedicated to animators. So these need an explanation, but all right, before we constrain this actor, let's get it closer to the head because it was doing some wacky stuff. So let's get it closer to his face. It's probably too close, but kind of like this. Let's go back to our camera. All right. I think this is good enough. So now we're going to add the constraint. I'm actually going to do it again. Go here, parent and parent it to the head control. There it is. And that means whenever we move our head, this moves with us. Just like an Ironman suit. 
And again, if you do this in another application like After Effects or like DaVinci Resolve, you're going to have to do some tracking, which can be painful. Tracking is not always great. There's, it's a huge process. So for me, it's a big deal that I can switch to. I already know how to do it in After Effects because I did a couple times for that short, but I can do it here. And this is so great. This is so amazing. Now I can move my head however I want and it would be animated along with my head. Those UI elements are on top of the head. And again, I cannot stress how awesome this is. And you can even do it for a video game. I used to be a game developer not too long ago. So if I were making a game where I had my metahuman and I wanted to have some UI elements floating on top of him, instead of doing some uh, technical magic, which I don't understand how to do UI in games because that wasn't my job, but now you can do it this way, which I think is pretty cool. And you can get very good looking VFX because we got this from a footage that's supposed to go into a film, not into a video game. Because we got this from Render Crate and they do work with Netflix and, and they work with people that make shows and movies and, and all that kind of stuff. So this is very cool that we can have that kind of level of assets as UI elements inside Unreal Engine. Now... I don't know if you're thinking what I'm thinking, but what if we can get VFX that you usually composite in After Effects? What if we can get them here? So this is one of the reasons why I mentioned this was going to be a series, because now what I'm going to do is when the ship is landing, I don't know if you saw that video, it's also on the channel. When I have that ship landing from the Kitsch Bash 3D, you saw that there wasn't any flaring from the engines, there wasn't any smoke. Now I can add smoke and I can add flaring on the engines by using constraints and doing this kind of stuff. So this is why I'll, I'll be migrating my short film to 5.1. And I just want to show you this cool stuff. I'm going to be showcasing more things about 5.1 pretty soon on my channel. So please subscribe, ring that bell so you'll get notified whenever I release that new video. Also, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, where everything is down in the links in the description uh, to get updates on my short film. And if not, then there's a Discord if you have any questions. We have a huge community, over a thousand people there that can help you with your Unreal Engine questions. Thanks, everybody, for watching this video, and um, I'll see you in the next one.